Historical Tahlequah. We're here in the Qualls General Store with Debbie Rucker, whose people have been here since the beginning of time. That's right. And Debbie, I want you to tell us a little bit about the establishment of this store and your great-grandmother, Jency Powers, and whatever you want to say. Oh, dear. Well, my great-grandmother, she and her family came here from Corbin, Kentucky. They came over in a covered wagon. Took a couple of months. And uh, they first stopped in Park Hill, and she had heard of a possible need of another store here in so up they came, and she taught school until she got her store, which was a smaller building that sat on the west side. Of and us. what year was this day? We're thinking right around nine, 1905. Before statehood. Yes, that's right. And uh, so anyway, she, uh, her father was a doctor, and he became ill, and uh, they had to go back to Corbin. And my grandmother, the oldest of the girls, uh, she said they had a little dog. And when they came out here on the first time, he walked every step of the way. She oh. said she would put the dog in the wagon and he would jump out. Well, back they go, the dog walks. Her father heals up and does fine and they come back and the little dog walks again, every step of the way. But by then, uh, she had got uh, got acquainted with the folks and everything here, and uh, she had her home, which is across the road from the building here, she mm -hmm. had it uh, brought in from Park Hill, they moved it. And uh, in 1914 is when she applied to have the post office moved here into what the old timers called New Qualls. And that's because Old Qualls was to the west here. That's right. Uh, if you're familiar with Camp Gruber, there's a low water slab uh, probably about two and a half miles from here. And uh, John Qualls, <clears throat> he and his wife, his wife had, uh, that was her Indian allotted land, and they had a store, and uh, there was another family with them at the time. I think his name was Denton. And they had a sawmill also, and they were trying to figure out whose name they were going to use for the community. Well, they flipped a coin and Qualls won. And now my records, uh, historical records show that that post office was opened in 1909, right. and uh, um, the post office was named for the postmaster, Will, William Alfred Qualls. Yes. Now, when did the post office come down here to New Qualls Okay, then? well, when it came to the large city here, New Qualls, that was in 1917. And my great-grandmother was uh, postmasters. And uh, the post, I mean, the post office was here until 1945. And uh, of course, that's when all of the small little post offices started consolidating and going to, everything went to Park Hill and then to Cookson. And you're saying 1945, and that's what your paper show, is that? Yes. Uh -huh. Well, because the source that I was using said 1942, so your, your papers I, would be... Well, I might be, excuse me, a couple of years off. Well, anyway, in the, in the mid-1940s, uh -huh. that's when the post office closed. And now, this, this store, this building was then built after, after the first building. Right, this was built in 1936. All right. And uh, Granny went to see her youngest daughter, Aunt B. You know, everybody has to have an Aunt B. Uh -huh. And she was her baby who lived in Seaman, Oklahoma. Yes. And she went out and uh, there was a store just like this. And so when she came home, she had uh, all the lumber milled over in Arkansas and brought in. To, to build this building? Yes. And she was a, a woman entrepreneur, a yes, she business was. woman. Yes, she was. Uh, in her ledgers, uh, how she, everything was written out, who borrowed uh, or traded. Uh, and she always come, come out on top a little bit, just enough to keep, you know, uh, so she was ready for the next deal. And uh, my father, when he was nine years old, his father passed away, and in the ledgers it was him, his mother, and his sister. And, uh, in the ledgers uh, under Nan Rucker, it said uh, 50 cents credited to Nan's account, Jack Cutter Rick of Wood. 
Okay. So well, that guys. wasn't done with a chainsaw. But no. Anyway, 50 cents for a cross a cut, maybe. Well, another claim to fame for this building, uh, Debbie, is that the original version of where the red fern grows uh, was filmed here, the store, the interior of the store. Right. And um, then the 2000 remake was also filmed here. And I think the name James Whitmore calls up a story, perhaps, for you. Oh, yes. He was such a wonderful person. And, and who uh, was he, in case there are some out there who don't know? Well, he was the grandfather, the famous grandfather in Where the Red Fern Grows. And uh, he and he loved this area, and he would bring his little rod and reel and over here to the creek and fish off of the pool, uh, off of the bridge. Oh, honey. You know, just to get a few little perch, but he he enjoyed it and just. So he was really nice. human. Very so. So very much actors so. can be human. That's right. That's right. Well, it's uh, time now for a commercial gr a break, and when we come back, we're going to look at some of the uh, antiques along the shelves in the store, and then we're going outside to look at the vintage carriage. So don't go away. Mm -hmm. 